laws of jurisprudence. In certain conditions, it is further obligatory to eat and eating in such conditions will allow one to accumulate reward. Not eating in such conditions will cause one to be held in contempt, like he will be regarded as being sinful. If a person's hunger is so intense that he feels he will surely die if he does not eat, then in such a condition it is further for him to eat the amount of food which is sufficient to save his life. If he does not eat in this condition and this causes his death, then he will be regarded as being sinful. It is necessary for a person to eat enough that will give him the energy to stand up and perform his namaz and to keep his fast. In other words, if he does not eat, he will become so weak that he will not have enough energy to stand up and perform his namaz or keep his fast. To eat in such a condition is deserving of reward. Medicine and treatment should not be adduced on, on the basis of the ruling, which is applicable to food and drink. In other words, in the condition of the risk of death, one is permitted to eat the carrion and to drink alcohol only sufficient to save one's life, but alcohol as a medicine will not be regarded as permissible. Reason being that the flesh of the carrion and the alcohol will definitely alleviate the hunger which is threatening one's life, but it cannot be said with complete conviction that consuming alcohol as a medicine will definitely reverse the illness. One should try to eat less than one's hunger, and to eat so much that one's hunger is completely alleviated is mubah. Neither is there any special reward in doing so, nor any sin, because there is always the possibility that one could have had a valid reason for this, like eating enough to alleviate the hunger totally, such as to attain more stamina. To eat more than one's hunger, like to overeat, is haram. To eat more than one's hunger means to eat so much that there is a risk of the stomach being damaged or upset. In other words, there is a risk that it will lead to having diarrhea and will cause one's condition to become unpleasant, like it can cause severe indigestion. If one eats more than one's hunger or need, with this thought in his mind that he would be able to keep the fast of the following day properly and so that he will not feel any fatigue whilst fasting, then there is no harm in doing so. This is only when he only eats so much more where he knows that it will not cause any harm to his stomach and he knows that if he does not eat more, he will feel fatigue and it will take a longer time for him to accomplish other duties. Similarly, if he is partaking in a meal with a visitor and he knows that by him holding back his hand, the visitor will be shy to eat a full stomach, then even in such a situation, one is allowed to eat a bit more. To eat a full stomach so that one may be able to perform nafil prayers in abundance and that he will not feel any fatigue in reading or teaching, and he will be able to accomplish this duty properly, is recommended. If one ate more than one's limit, but not so much that the stomach is upset, it is makru. A person who spends a great deal of time in ibadat, worshipping and prayer, has the discretion of either eating to the extent of it being bubah, or to the extent of it being mandub, like recommended, but he should make the intention that I am eating so that I may attain the necessary stamina to perform ibadat. As to eat with the said intention is also included in the category of obedience to Allah. One should not eat with the objective of attaining pleasure and delight as this is not a good quality. In the Holy Quran, it mentions that the objective of the kuffar is to eat for pleasure and enjoyment. And overeating, like overindulging, has been referred to in the Hadith Sharif as the quality of the kuffar.